It's Idaho versus Idaho and South Carolina meeting in NCAA basketball for the first time ever. And we've got a crowd of some 9,000 gathered here on a gloomy Sunday, Saturday afternoon at Carolina Coliseum for this first intersectional meeting between the two clubs. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with former Seton Hall head coach Bill Raftery. Bill, South Carolina's Bill Foster had heart surgery, the head coach, five weeks ago. And Steve Steinwendel has taken over as a very young acting coach. 29 years of age. He wants to be called the assistant coach. He's now 6-2 and two against mostly local clubs. Today, he goes intersectional against a fine Idaho team. He gets Gerald Peacock back today, though. Well, Gerald Peacock is very important to him. He runs the offense, leads the team in steals and assists. Very important player for South Carolina. Now, Idaho has been in the NCAA tournament the last two years, but still, most people don't know about this. Well, down here, they're saying Idaho. And I think they reflect their coach. He's a uh, not an ostentatious fellow. He just does a good job, and they play hard. What must South Carolina as an underdog do to win the game? Push the ball up the floor, rebound, and fast break as much as they can. It ought to be interesting. We're glad you're with us here on CBS. It's Idaho versus South Carolina, NCAA basketball, live from Columbia, back with a tip-off in a moment. The officiating crew out of the Atlantic Coast Conference, Gerald Donahue is the referee, the umpire John Titus, along with Rusty Harris. Three-man crew, and we might make the point off the bat in this intersectional game, there will be no three-point play, nor will there be a shot clock in effect. Starting lineups for both South Carolina and Idaho. Idaho dressed in black, Bill Hobson, Pete Priggy, Kelvin Smith, Brian Kellerman, and Steve Ar Stan Arnold. South Carolina will start Kenny Holmes, Kevin Dramedy, Jimmy Foster, Jimmy Hawthorne, and Scott Sanderson. Carolina 10 and 4 for the year. They lost their fourth just uh, Wednesday night. And uh, Idaho 13 and 2. They have been defeated this year by Fresno State and in overtime to Nevada Reno. Brian Kellerman gets the tip for Idaho as they go right to left here in the first half of play. He's being guarded by Jimmy Hawthorne. That'll be an interesting match to watch today. Kellerman, the uh, unquestioned leader of the team, but Bill Hobson. Cross court pass, Kelvin Smith got it. Two points. Well, the South Carolina coaches were saying they'd like to play 2 3, but Idaho plays it every day. Here's Kenny Holmes. He misses his first shot. Rebound taken by Jimmy Foster. He's got it. Foster is a very, very intense player. Good aggressive offensive rebound. Their leading rebounder. We're tied at two. Idaho with the ball again. Kelvin Smith, one of three starters who come back from last year's NCAA tournament team. Here's another Phil Hobson. And junior college transfer Stan Arnold has the ball now. Smith on the ninth. Misfire. Carolina's ball. Well, the scouting report was to give Smith that outside shot and look for him inside where he's very tough. Gerald Peacock has been out the last five games. Listen to the ovation. He's the captain of the team. If anybody tripped over the lines early, Peacock was coming in. <laughs> so Gerald Peacock out with an ankle injury for five games and back for the first time since game number nine. Kenny Holmes underneath. Foster didn't go. Coaching staff in their scatter report. Let's get the ball inside against Idaho. And Jimmy Foster is a very strong inside player, cutting the lane, good entry pass, and powering to the goal. He's not a finesse player, an aggressive, hard nosed player. They call him Truck. He's a junior this year. I heard him just before tip off. He walked up to one of his teammates, Mike Britton, and said, Froth at the mouth. Froth at the mouth. He's pumped, but he misses the first free throw. He is not a good free throw shooter, as a matter of fact. He's averaging uh, right at 51% on free throws. And he misses both here, but gets the rebound. Drives it up, and the low good. Second offensive rebound for a goal for South Carolina. Foster averaging just over 16 points per game. Has the first four for South Carolina. 4-2, underneath it goes Kelvin Smith. Turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound, Peacock misses, and Idaho controls Stan Arnold. Brian Kellerman on the post, it goes to Phil Hobson. Kellerman. Tenacious Carolina defense so far. Here's Arnold. Left side, Fallon deep. Phil Hobson with an offensive pick. Brian Kellerman with a little smile on his face. Take a look, Bill, after at the season comparison. It's amazing. Opponents point average 54, fourth or fifth, depending on last week's ball game, at 71 
for South Carolina a game. That's an interesting, we'll talk about that three and a half. Not only that, but Idaho has held opponents this year to shooting 41%. That's an outstanding record. 4-2, South Carolina has the lead. Gerald Peacock, the point guard. Kenny Holmes. Holmes getting his fifth start this uh, today. Has been on the bench or come off the bench most of the night. There's a cross-court pass to Hawthorne, back to Peacock. They need Peacock to, to penetrate that matchup zone. By the way, what is a matchup zone, Bill? Well, that's why I'm with you. I could never figure it out myself out on the floor. <laughs> but they play area and they switch people. And this is as good a matchup as we'll see. They do a lot of communicating to one another. They play areas. And Don Munson switches techniques, which we'll talk about as a game for They've got to be patient. They were, and Foster gets it. He's got six. And it's 6-2 South Carolina. Very important for South Carolina to get off to a quick start today. They have to take a lead because of the deliberate style which Idaho can play. Here's Brian Kellerman. Will the play go? No. Foul on Jimmy Hawthorne. Well, Hawthorne is not known for his defense. I saw him play in high school as an outstanding fast break player, much like Jim, uh, Jackie Galone, who played here in South Carolina. But defensively, he's got a tough assignment, an outstanding, steady Brian Kellerman he has to play today. That was not a shooting foul, so it'll be inbounded by Idaho. Kellerman, four-year starter. His father is a Lutheran minister in Mountain Home, Idaho. Here's the jumper from Stan Arnold. Got it. On the out-of-bounds, South Carolina went zone and left the top of the key open. Kellerman with the foul. They've got Brian Kellerman in the backcourt. That's his second foul. And the last thing in the world they need is to get their four-year starter and captain in foul trouble. He's got two now. When, South, excuse me, Bill. When you come out of the gate like this, this is when you start thinking about the travel problems. We'll talk about that. It, it's unbelievable what Idaho had to do to get here. Here's the cross-court pass to Jimmy Hawthorne. Kenny Holmes, Holmes, one dribble. Comes right side to Peacock. It's 6-4 right now. South Carolina leads it. They've got to be very patient, don't they? Absolutely. Maybe split with the dribble once in a while or pick the defender. Here's Hawthorne from the outside. He can hit it. This is this one. He was 9 of 12 the other night against East Carolina. Now the fast break. Great pass. Arnold right side. That's too strong. Smith with a rebound. Didn't get it. They'll battle again. Hobson puts it in. Good offensive boards. It's interesting. They fast break for a team that's very patient. They'll take that opportunity fast break. Tied at six. Gerald Peacock. Jimmy Hawthorne. The Idaho team played Thursday night against Weber State at home. They got up at 5.30 their time, Pacific time, yesterday morning to try and get here. They were due to come to Atlanta, but the Atlanta airport was closed by the ice we had here in the south. Here's Kenny Holmes. So here's the travel itinerary for Idaho. Spokane, Peacock to the outside, too strong, and Kelvin Smith with the rebound. Spokane to Denver to Louisville to Washington to Roanoke to Charlotte, North Carolina, to Fayetteville, North Carolina, and then bus ride in. They got here at 3 o'clock this morning. Here's Jimmy Hawthorne. Lays it up. Here's the final got it. 8-6. Their game plan, South Carolina, is to run, push the ball up, take those quick shots when they present themselves. There's a look at Steve Steinwittle, a 29-year-old acting head coach. Kellerman goes inside to Kelvin Smith. Good fake. And the basket will not count. I believe Darmody's going to be called for this foul. Wait, a well coach two, four. They push the ball the inside four. matchup. Ball this match is, they dump the ball. They're an unselfish basketball club. Brad Jurgensen replaces Kevin Darmody in the South Carolina lineup. It's 8-6. South Carolina has the lead. Timeout on the court. Last week's Chevrolet player of the game was Rodney McRae, the Louisville player who had a great game against DePaul and near the conclusion of every CBS Sports NCAA basketball game. Bill Raftery and I will be selecting the Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet donates $1,000 to be equally shared by the general scholarship funds of both schools to assist students in all chosen academic disciplines. That'll be coming up later on. Now we've got Idaho with the inbounds play. Pete Priggy, who was uh, the sixth man in last year's NCAA tournament team, and as a starter this year, brings it in. Now to Brian Kellerman. Once again, South Carolina in the two zone on the out of bounds. Idaho a little more delivered against the zone. Priggy left wing. Looks underneath for Hobson. Hobson at the post. Hobson drives. And we're going to have a foul called uh, during the shot or before. 
Steve Steinwettle up off the bench, the acting coach of uh, South Carolina. Well, Steiny will be up all day. I think he got up about four this morning. Very involved in his position and dedicated. And Bill Forster having dinner with him last night. Very proud of what his staff has done for him. Ray Jones and Kirk Kineski of LaSalle. Which happens to be your school, right? Bill Hobson, Jefferson High School in Portland, Oregon. He is a smooth player. Gets one of two. It's 8-7. South Carolina still has a one-point lead. We've got 14-50 to go first half. Gerald Peacock, Stan Arnold on him. They look for Brad Jurgensen, number 34. Here's Hawthorne, 33. And the cross-court pass to Peacock. Drives the lane, lays it out, stolen. It's a three-on-one break. They fill the middle. This is Arnold to Kellerman. And Kellerman has the layup off the glass. Opportunity break, a steal, a turnover. Kellerman, floating layups. We'll see many of those during the course of the night. First basket for Kellerman. Here's Hawthorne driving, lays it off in the corner. Based on Tucker, Kenny Holmes, South Carolina back on top. South Carolina was confident coming into this ball game, even though they played poorly early in the week. Had two good practices, well prepared for this ball game. They played East Carolina on the road Thursday night and said uh, Wednesday night rather. Here's Kelvin Smith from the outside, and Jurgensen is there to get the rebound. Said it was by far their worst of the year. Here's Hawthorne drives, lays it up, and the way, no goal there. And backcourt foul on Kellerman. That brings Don Munson off the bench. Well, the animated Don Munson. Uh, Playing here, Jimmy Hawthorne, Hawthorne making good penetration. The shot blocked by Kelvin Smith. Kellerman with the recovery. Jimmy Foster picking it up. That's three fouls on the captain of the Idaho team, Brian Kellerman. He had 24 points in their game Thursday night, 14 in the first half. Foster again. Boy, he muscles his way around, Bill, doesn't he? A little bit of a force there. The truck trying to get on the scoreboard. Left side, Phil Hobson. This is primarily a five-man team. They don't play well. They'll go to six, Joe Sweeney, and every once in a while, Zane Frazier. But they don't play many more than seven men. Well, the type of ball game they play, generally, they don't get into foul trouble. There's a skip pass or the cross-court pass. Want to explain what a skip pass is? Well, Coach Lundquist. Get it in a minute. Here's a Carolina rebound. Peacock on the run. Comes right. Facing that zone again. There's another skip pass or cross-court pass. They just skip one player and go to another. And a foul call. It's important to come up with new catch words in coaching that keeps you current. But we're down here watching practice. A skip pass is when they cross-court it and generally pass by one player or occasionally two. If they pass by more than that, it's usually out of bounds. Foul called inbounds. Here's Jimmy Hawthorne, had 9 of 12 shooting in the lost East Carolina the other night. Peacock, right side it comes. They look for Foster underneath, but back to Peacock. Jurgensen didn't start. I think it was more of a psych job than any punishment. He's their second leading scorer and rebounder. I think they just wanted to get him involved in the game from a bench standpoint. Hawthorne. One bounce, Peacock. Gerald Peacock, he's the senior and captain. Hawthorne, he'll drive, puts it up, got it. Nice play by Jimmy Hawthorne, the sophomore, who wears number 33 in white. 12-9, South Carolina lead, 12-20 to go in the first half. Near steal by Hawthorne. Arnold in the corner. He's hit one of those, gets to make it two. Not known for his deep shooting. He's more of a penetrator trying to draw the foul, but he's nailed two deep jump shots. Hawthorne again. He's got Kellerman on him. Kellerman playing with three fouls, but Don Munson did not bench him. Hawthorne has Holmes in the corner. Now, Kenny Holmes is a streak shooter. If he starts, this is a skip pass over to Peacock. And underneath, Brad Jurgensen misses. The tip in is cut by Kenny Holmes. Good offensive board work. Their third goal off a tip. That keeps you in the ball game, but they're taking good shots and getting good position. Four points for Kenny Holmes, 14-11 South Carolina leads. Kellerman, baseline, off-balance jumper, won't go, rebound to Foster. And the ball is taken away by Arnold. That's a two-on-three, he needs to hold up. And he does, they'll come back and reload it. Uh, Jimmy Foster wasn't alert for this, swiping of the ball. Ricky Kellerman, got it. Brian Kellerman with four points. Don Munson still nervous. It's 14-13 South Carolina. 
Coach Munson makes more gyrations over there than I've seen in most coaches. Oh, he's a picture on that bench. Animated. Superstitious man. Sometimes he won't even look at the court. Here's Hawthorne. Good rotation on the ball, but it won't go. Arnold. It's a two on three. He goes right side to Kellerman. They'll pull up and shoot it, and Kellerman has six points now. He's got nice range. Brian Kellerman knows his foul situation, pulls up, nails the jump shot. Kellerman with six points. Idaho back in the lead, 15-14. Biggest lead so far, 6-2. to two. And a four-point lead for South Carolina. 10-30 remaining in the first half. Hawthorne to Peacock. Jimmy Hawthorne has just uh, been added to the starting rotation here lately. Here's Holmes. Good pump fake and baseline move, drawing the foul. Kenny Holmes, who hasn't started, is in it for this ball game. Steve Sidewell on, on the bench, Stein Little, and let's look at it again. So Joe Peacock setting the offense up, skip passing as Bill Foster calls it. Strong lefty baseline move. Boy, he came right by Pete Briggy. Kenny Holmes, Joe Morrison, the football coach, maybe after this. Well, he does look like a football player. There's Stein Whittle, Kirk Kanaski to the left, and Ray Jones was to the right. And a look at Kenny Holmes, who has a chance for the three point play and a two point South Carolina lead. They couldn't have asked for a better start. They're in it emotionally. They're taking good shots, South Carolina. Unfortunately for Idaho, they're struggling a little bit in their offensive set, rushing some shots. Holmes hitting 69% for the year. Three-point play. Seven points now for Kenny Holmes, and South Carolina has a two-point lead. South Carolina 17, Idaho 15. Back in a moment. CBS World Premiere. Why are County General's patients the target of a mysterious arsonist? It's a deadly race against time. Uncommon Valor, Saturday. We're back with the score of South Carolina 17, Idaho 15. I'm Bill Lundquist, along with former Seton Hall head coach Bill Raftery, Brian Kellerman with three fouls. Well, Coach Bunsen feels he's a smart player, a heady player. He's letting him perform this half. He's the rock of Gibraltar. He's got to be awful intelligent in the next 10 minutes. That door play got it. Oh, my goodness, Kelvin Smith. He's 6'6", but he went up about two feet off the ground. And it's tied at 17. We've had a substitution now for South Carolina. Harold Martin, number 32, has come in in white. There's Gerald Peacock, Kenny Holmes, Brad Jurgensen, Jimmy Foster, and Martin with the ball. Drives it, lays it in, good. His first basket of the day, South Carolina on top. It didn't take a long to get to the flow of the ball game. Martin has been a starter and was replaced about three games ago by Jimmy Hawthorne. And Hawthorne is out of there right now. Martin, much the better defensive player. Backdoor play again underneath Kellerman. He's got eight. Beautiful set. He hit in the corner, went off the back screen underneath the basket. Hobson spotting it. 9.22 to go first half. 19-19. Gerald Peacock. Working with Stan Arnold. Here's Kenny Holmes. Ball was hit. Arch of the ball deflected and a foul underneath. The big fella truck. Jimmy Foster being called for the foul. A little too aggressive on the glass. That's Foster's first. Jimmy Foster had the first six points of the game for South Carolina and has been a quiet presence since then. That's his first personal foul. He has been free, but they haven't been getting the ball inside again. It's a defensive tactic that's taken him out of the game a little bit. And that's one of the keys for South Carolina is to get that ball inside, penetrate. Absolutely. Underneath again. Boy, they're working that uh, pick play very well. Kellerman can't get it off the glass, though. Here comes Gerald Peacock. He's got Martin right side, but doesn't see him. Settles for Holmes. Pump fake. There's no foul. And the rebound, Idaho. I thought sure we'd have a whistle. Here come the Vandals on the roll. Arnold, right side. Kellerman, he's hit three of those. He misses this one. Last couple of sequences, Kenny Holmes has been hit, and it hasn't been called unusual in a home court. Yes, it is in a home court. These are ACC officials. South Carolina as an independent, by the way, and Idaho, of course, a member of the Big Sky Conference. Idaho came in 13 and 2, South Carolina 10 and 4, and they've got Foster underneath, but uh, Peacock didn't see him. They haven't been looking in. Here's Harold Martin. He feeds Brad Jurgensen. Turnaround is short, rebound, and a battle, and it may be on Jurgensen. Reaching over the back, number 34 in white. Look at Kurt Kanaski and Steve Steinwedel. 
Bill Foster is doing just great after his bypass surgery. He even paid for dinner last night. <laughs> He's changed completely. In fact, your friend, Abe Levins, I understand Abe was one of the first to call him. We see the big fella in Britain, seven-footer, but yeah, Abe sent a note or uh, said, uh, I'm glad you're feeling well. I've sent a letter to the Chancellor of the University applying for your job. <laughs> <laughs> Abe Levins, the former Texas coach. Mike Britton has joined the lineup now. So South Carolina going off. They did it. No, it didn't work this time. Mike Britton, backcourt foul on Phil Hobson. Well, those are the fouls coaches do not enjoy. Didn't have anything to do with the play. Now, Mike Britton's had two good days of practice, and there's great expectations of this young player. The 6'8 people are smoother, a little bit stronger. But for South Carolina to have a program, they feel Britain's got to come and help them. He's a seven-foot sophomore from Clearwater, Florida. And he has some tools, doesn't he? About seven feet of them right there. <laughs> That's not a bad start in basketball. On the free throw line for the year, he's hitting 90%, 18-20. That's unusual for a big man, but what a nice touch he's got with the ball. He hesitates at the end of the foul shot, and he can draw people into the lane as he did then, but they did not call it. I'll bet you that you won't find any other seven-footer in the country hitting 90% set of his shots. Ah, well, make it 89%. That'll be taken by Idaho. 20-19, to 19, South Carolina has the lead. Nice pass from Arnold. And we had a substitution now for Idaho. Zane Frazier has come in, number 30 in black. I think you'll see more substituting by Idaho because of the traveling. Seven minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the first half of play. South Carolina still holding on to a lead. It's currently one point, 20 to 19. Tomorrow, CBS Sports brings you more coverage of NCAA basketball featuring sixth-rated Memphis State, fifth-ranked in CBS Sports Coaches Bowl, pitted against North Carolina State starting at 1 o'clock. Following NCAA basketball, the final round of the Grand Prix Masters Tennis Tournament from Madison Square Garden. This is the culminating $400,000 playoff event of the year, 84 Tournament Grand Prix Circuit. Be here tomorrow for great tennis action at the Grand Prix Masters Tournament, 3 o'clock Eastern time on CBS Sports. Bill Hobson has not been that effective thus far. Here's Zane Frazier. That'll be goaltending. Mike Britton. Early, the ball. early in the game, you like to see that, though. It's an intimidating force. You see both clubs substituting a little more now. However, Idaho gets to the glass quickly. Good offensive rebounding team. 21-20, Idaho has the lead. South Carolina the ball. Gerald Peacock, he's in there with Kenny Holmes, Mike Britton, Jimmy Foster, and Harold Martin right now. This is Harold Martin, number 32, back to Peacock. And they'll set the screen on the far side. Now Foster comes over. Here's Martin, turn around, jumper, didn't get it. Foster gets the rebound, however, and he struggles, goes up, and draws the foul. Phil Hobson, Jimmy Foster's, uh, it's an unusual uh, type of physique. He's very strong up top, pushes people without fouling. He's an aggressive inside player. He's 6'8", and doesn't look it. He really doesn't look it. Where we're seated, he doesn't look it. <laughs> but he doesn't. Next to Britton, he looks three or four inches smaller. And he's not a good free-throw shooter. We made the point earlier, hitting only 50%. Jimmy Foster averaged 26 points as a junior in high school and did not play basketball his senior year. And then he sat out a year before entering South Carolina, and he has been a three-year starter here. All games are important, but South Carolina, as an independent, it's important that they win as many games as possible in terms of the NCAA. Of course, Idaho, on the other hand, Big Sky Conference, automatic bid in their, in their conference. It's a little bit different, but everybody likes to win. Well, and they are getting some exposure today that they ordinarily don't draw in Moscow, Idaho. Here's Stan Arnold, junior college transfer out of California. Back to Zane Frazier. Arnold will take the jumper, and it's an air ball. Very short. Here comes South Carolina on the run. Gerald Peacock, Kenny Holmes, quick pass underneath. Good. Good touch pass. Kenny Holmes spotty. Jimmy Foster, who shapes up beautifully. That was a fine play from Kenny Holmes to Jimmy Foster. Nine points for Foster now. 23-21 South Carolina with 6.13 to go first half. In the corner, it's Kellerman. That oh. skimmed off the glass, but what a quick release by that player. Brian Kellerman. 
Here's Harold Martin, the ball blocked by Phil Hobson. Underneath, turnaround jumper Britton off the iron, taken down by Idaho. Watch out, that's trouble. Charge by Stan Arnold. Steiny liking that call. Knowing how involved Steiny is, he doesn't really get on the officials at all. This is from the defensive end, the pitch out. Stan Arnold not really seeing the defender. Peacock step in and charge him before he can release the pass. Brad Jurgensen will inbound the ball for South Carolina. And Arnold is on the bench. Joe Sweeney makes his first appearance. Sweeney, another junior college transfer. He wears number 21. He's the point. And he'll guard uh, Gerald Peacock now. Arnold on the bench for the first time. That's the second substitute that uh, Don Munson has used. South Carolina is running some of their man-to-man -man offense against this matchup and effectively. Jurgens, cross-court pass underneath, taken away by Kellerman. Boy, he's got the quick hands, and here's Sweeney who can jump, lays it off, reverse. And what court. a beautiful pass leading Sweeney to the goal. Very nice touch by Brian Kellerman. 25-23, Idaho has the lead once again. It's been a teeter-totter thus far. Harold Martin in the corner, almost stolen by Pete Priggy. They fill the lane with Jimmy Foster, and he's got it. 11 points for Foster. That might loosen Brad Jurgensen up a little bit. Good penetration and the pass. Joe Swinney beat Priggy, number 24. Kellerman may have moved. He did. Traveling. Kenny Holmes, number 30, will check back in for South Carolina, and they're going to give Mike Gritton a rest. Unofficially, I have Idaho for four turnovers. And generally, they average 14 a game, which is not a whole lot. It's, it's good basketball. They used to say approximately 12 was great basketball. 25-25. Vern Lundquist, Bill Raftery here in Columbia, South Carolina. Jurgensen and Foster are the inside men now. As Kenny Holmes has come back in the lineup for South Carolina, this is Phil Hobson guarding Gerald Peacock. Gerald Martin at the top of the key, number 32, to Gerald Peacock, number 12. Underneath it goes to Kenny Holmes, number 30, and Peacock will let it fly from way outside. Kelvin Smith with the rebound. Turnovers so far, 6-4, to four, Idaho over South Carolina. Underneath off the hands of Priggy, and it comes South Carolina's way. Take it out, Kelvin. Up fast. That's seven. And a substitution, Gerald Peacock will get a rest. And Scott Sanderson, whose dad, Wimp, is the head coach at the University of Alabama, he is back in the lineup. Well, one of the sweet men in basketball. Got to know him last year, doing five in the ball game. Jurgensen, top of the key. Guarded very closely by Priggy. And they look for Foster. Priggy's on him now. Kelvin Smith is still looking for Foster. Baseline drive. Drive the over the head pass, and we got a foul underneath. What a catch in traffic by Jimmy Foster. That was a hard pass by Martin. Not a catchable, but good hands by Jimmy Foster. Baseline penetration. Harold Martin spotting Foster in traffic with a little bit of a bailout pass. He's ready to go out of bounds. And you give this foul to a few people. Foster back at the free throw line. He has hit one here in the first half. And he gets two this time. That, by the way, seventh foul on Idaho. So Iowa, South Carolina is in the bonus now anyway. He applauded himself. I think, I think Jimmy had like a moving rim. He'd feel more comfortable. <laughs> they call him Truck. That's the big thing. Got them both. So Foster hits two from the free throw line. He has 13 points. Out of the 27, South Carolina has scored. Time out on the court. We've got three minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the first half. South Carolina, a two-point lead. 346 remaining in the first half. South Carolina has a current two-point edge. It has gone back and forth for this tired Idaho team that has lost only twice. If you just joined us, we'll tell you again. They went from Moscow to Spokane to Denver. And a battle be charging again on Joe Sweeney. Well, with Joe Sweeney in the ball game, good step in there again by Peacock. With him in the ball game, I envision more fast breaks by South Carolina because Joe Sweeney crashes the boards and bears the back court. So we might look for that. Oh, that one drove Don Munson nuts on the bench, and now he's up and prowling. He's walking. He's going to send us up back in. Stan, Stan Arnold will come back in the line. There's Munson. 27-25 with 3.15 to go in the first half. 
Harold Martin, Gerald Peacock. Has Peacock been the kind of player they needed to, so far? No, he hasn't played as well as he's capable of. In fact, I think he's a little bit tired. He's taking some shots he shouldn't. He looks a little tentative, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Traveling on Joe Sweeney. And they should bring Arnold in now, and Sweeney will go to the bench. That last charge by Sweeney, I didn't think he had time to take what we used to call a step. Tough call on Joe Sweeney. Oh, it's a tough game, Don. It's a tough game. <laughs> we asked him about his superstitions before the game because he's uh, so superstitious, but he's so superstitious he didn't want to tell us what they were. I thought he had a book on the floor. His head's down. Looks as though he's reading the evening news. <laughs> Kenny Holmes. Foster. It ain't pretty, but it goes in. He's not smooth, but when, he, when he's in the groove, he's tough inside. This is our high angle shot in the upper left-hand corner here in South Carolina. Kelvin Smith from the outside. It's 29-25, South Carolina has equaled its biggest lead. Hobson turnaround. For Bill Hobson, that's only his uh, fourth point. And he, he must score for Idaho to play well. He had 11 Thursday night in the win over Weaver State. 29-27 with 2.08 to go. Last time down, South Carolina showed their matchup defense. Hobson handled it. Cross-court pass, Gerald Peacock. Peacock to Brad Jerkins, Errol Martin. Oh, Don Munson wanted a traveling call there, didn't get one. Underneath, here's Foster again. What a rejection by Kelvin Smith. It's a three-on-three. -three. Great pass, Briggy over the top, charging. Martin showing a lot of courage. Pete Priggy was in full stride. Giving the ball up early. Jimmy Foster felt like he had assured those. Kelvin Smith swatting the ball away, igniting the fast break and the eventual charge. That was a great, great play by Kelvin Smith, but then Priggy with a charging call. And he and Brian Kellerman are both out of there now. Hobson is still in. Kellerman and Priggy on the bench. And Ben Ross has made his first appearance, number 32, the curly-headed kid with the glasses, uh, has his back to you, number 32, Ben Ross is in the lineup. Munson's over on the sideline talking to the one official. He's saying, if I had known this, I would have stayed in Fayetteville. <laughs> I wouldn't have bust down here. They were, they, they were in Fayetteville, North Carolina. There's a look at Ross. And the other player in is Freeman Watkins, number 42. He's on the far side of the lane. So uh, three subs in the lineup right now, or two rather. Of course, Munson's pointing up at the scoreboard saying, look, we're not even in the penalty yet. A minute and 44 left. Kelvin Smith rebound. Out it comes to Stan Arnold. Arnold looks left side. Underneath, turn around. Freeman Watkins won't go. Carolina really rebound. Gerald Peacock across the timeline. It's 29-27 with 1.30 to go. Cross-court pass to Kenny Holmes. Ben Ross over on him. Back it comes. Ross has not played much at all this year. And Kenny Holmes for an offensive pick. And I think Coach Munson's little dialogue on the sideline has been him. Yeah, he uh, had some things to say to one of the umpires. I was very impressed with him during this morning's workout. Very quiet, no whistle. They all hear him. That's right. They got in here at 3 o'clock, having taken a bus ride from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I love what Don said. He said when they told him he was in Fayetteville at 11.30 last night, he thought it was Arkansas, and he wanted to call Eddie Sutton to get some tips. Here comes Peacock, right side. Kenny Holmes having some trouble controlling the ball. Final minute, first half. There's a steal back the other way. Freeman Watkins, Stan Arnold, off-balance jumper, too strong. Kenny Holmes looks for the home run pass, and he'll slow it down instead. Just the opposite of what we said. South Carolina's not running. Idaho's running. But South Carolina is getting the ball inside and getting better shots. 29-27. They may wait for the final shot now. Jimmy Hawthorne, number 33. Gerald Peacock, number 12. Back to Hawthorne. Right side it goes. Left side, rather. Hawthorne, they will take the final shot, it appears. Underneath. Oh, we've got another sub in there. Pete Wright's number 52 is in. So he has used his bench. Don Munson, that is. 
foul is going to be on Jimmy Foster. Offensive foul. And a good call to Jimmy Foster warded off his man by extending his arm. And Kenny Holmes in that position probably should have used a little better judgment. Bring the ball out, hold it for the last shot, win two or four. Now they put Idaho on the foul line. This will be Pete Wright's first time to the line today. He's only tried two free throws all year. He is 0 for 2. He has not scored a point this season. And he still has it. Pete Wright's a 6'10 freshman from Auburn, California. Five seconds to go. Hawthorne takes the final shot. Rebound. Tip. Did it go in time? Yes, it did. Oh, the goal. Jimmy Foster lighting up the crowd. Good offensive rebound. That's 17 points for Jimmy Foster. Look at it again and watch the clock. Jimmy Hawthorne trying to draw the foul with the jump shot. Both Jurgensen and Foster getting the tip. Jimmy Foster before time ran out. You could see Foster tip the ball. There's Charlie Fitzsimmons. He's a junior accounting major here at South Carolina. And they call him cocky. Let's take a look at it again. Jimmy Hawthorne knowing the clock, taking it with three to go with an opportunity for a tip in. Jimmy Foster before the clock ran out. And he's awakened the crowd. Well, we said at the top of the telecast, Jimmy Foster needed to have a big game. He has 17 first half points, and he's got 17 of the 31 that they'd scored. That's the end of the first half with the score. South Carolina 31, Idaho 27. NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. We're at halftime, Idaho trailing South Carolina 31-27. We'll continue with more of our halftime activities right after this message. Halftime at Carolina Coliseum in Columbia, South Carolina. CBS's coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. Today's game is sponsored by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. And by IBM. Halftime with our score, Idaho 27, South Carolina 31. Both teams back on the court, and we're getting set for the second half tip-off. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Bill Raftery. And Bill, uh, Interesting first half because it was said that they needed to get the ball to Jimmy Foster and South Carolina did just that. And then they stopped, which got them back, uh, got Idaho back in the ball game. Uh, Jimmy Foster is an interesting player. He's so strong and aggressive. Nothing pretty. He's not one of your clinic performers, but he's got a great attitude about basketball. He's a hard player, and he sort of got the crowd involved in the ball game. Let's take a look at the first half stats, and they're fairly even, just as is our score. The one thing that stands out, I guess, for, for me, Bill, are the free throws. Idaho only shot three and only hit one. Well, I think Don Munson was bringing that to the mind or attention of the officials. And on the road, you're begging, of course. But uh, it's disastrous when you don't get to the foul line. And then the turnovers, of course, 11 for Idaho and 7 South Carolina. Now let's take a look at the CBS uh, NCAA shot chart, which plots where these teams have taken them. Take a look at where Idaho's uh, shot selection has been. Well, it's interesting. They, they got enough of them, but they didn't convert them. They're only making five. And uh, conversely, on the other side, South Carolina ending up with nine baskets inside. Yeah, the, the, the figure here represent layups, layups or tip-ins. And five for Idaho. And they hit the perimeter shots up here, Kellerman with three. Nothing from the left-hand side. Well, now, you go down the other side and look at the uh, number of layups and tip-ins for South Carolina. I think Billy Packer got the idea on this because he never got inside, like the long shot. <laughs> well, we mentioned Jimmy Foster, and he has had, indeed, a terrific first half. Let's take a look at Foster and action 17 points in the first half along. Bill Foster teaches posting up as well as anybody in the country and he's quick but he's not that quick a little speed movement <laughs> but he's an aggressive player and here he's like a Mack truck I think that's where he may have gotten the nickname here he piles through people with a spin shot off the glass and this is what Brian Kellerman does best quick release long jump shot now watch him look at it like get me the ball I can do it and the alley -oop play back screen down low by Zane Frazier and Kelvin Smith going up high he and Hobson get up on the glass as fast as anybody I've seen this year 
has the has the long trip that Idaho made taken its toll? Yeah, the first half? I think it has, but I'm sure Don Munson is inside. He didn't come out until it was about a minute left to shoot. I'm sure he's saying, I don't want to hear any of that nonsense. We're here to play basketball. He seems like an old country type of man. There he's saying, gee, I wish I were back home. <laughs> but uh, I don't, I, I'm sure he's not selling that to his players. He's saying, go out and play. We're a good basketball team. We've got to overcome some adversity. Head coach at Cheney High School in Washington, Pasco High School in Washington for a total of 14 years. Then he was an assistant at Michigan State to Judd Heathcote before he finally got the job at his alma mater, Idaho, five years ago. He graduated from Idaho in 1955. In the corner, Jimmy Hawthorne, 21-30, 27-31. South Carolina has the lead. Check the lineups now. Gerald Peacock, number 12, looks inside for Jimmy Foster, 44. Kenny Holmes, number 30. This is Hawthorne, Jimmy Hawthorne, number 33. And Kenny Holmes has it now. Hawthorne decides against taking the shot. Now looking underneath for Foster. Brad Jurgensen is starting the second half. Uh, across the court they go to Jurgensen. He controls it, goes back. Peacock will not take the long shot. Holmes has slipped. Now Hawthorne will, and Hawthorne hits. Jimmy's having a field day. Jimmy Hawthorne, number 33. That's six points for Hawthorne, and the biggest lead of the ball game now, 33-27. South Carolina up by six. Gellerman underneath the Hobson. Hobson with only six points in the first half, and he gets two now. Got a little bounce there. They needed a basket. We got a little prior. 33-29. South Carolina spreads it out a little bit. Idaho, Idaho's extending their zone a little bit. They do some trapping out of this. Brad Jurgensen hits from the baseline. 35-29. Jurgensen with his first basket today. He was only one out of eight from the field the other night against East Carolina. And thus did not start this ball game. He's from Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Back it comes to Stan Arnold. He replaced Kenny Owens, who was the point guard starter for Idaho for two years and a brilliant performer. And prior to that, they had Don Newman. So they've, they've had great point guards in the last four years. Kelvin Smith hit from behind. Stolen. Harold Pe Gerald Peacock. Here's Foster on the run. Too strong. They'll come the other direction. Kelvin Smith puts a hip out and doesn't get caught. Got away with one. Hobson. Fouled underneath by Jurgensen. Jurgensen, good recovery by South Carolina. Wire to wire basketball. Nobody converting the goals. That was the second foul on Jurgensen. Take a look at it again. Yeah, Stan Arnold spotting. Hobson deep. Jurgensen coming over the top, banging down on him. But Jimmy Forster was going so hard he couldn't soften up his layup. Started the fast break the other way. Hobson hits 63% from the free throw line, uses all of the iron, but gets the first. And that's only the second free throw for Idaho today. Eight points now for Phil Hobson. See his season average of 11.8. Got them both. 35-31, Don Munson up off the bench. Idaho has cut it back to four. South Carolina 10 and four, here's the long and short of it. Ray <laughs> Jones at 5'5 five, five on the bench. And Steiny at 6'8, I guess. Steve yeah. Steinwittle. Here's Jimmy Hawthorne. And there's Brad Jerkinson. Brad not agreeing with the foul there. Jerkinson shaking his head. 17.39 to go in the first half. Kellerman sort of taking over the point position now, bringing the ball down the floor. Left side, Pete Priggy. He will not take the shot. And underneath, nice move, Kelvin Smith. 35-33. Six points, points for Kelvin Smith. Go inside when you're in trouble. Kelvin Smith getting nice pass, going strong for the basket. Jimmy Foster outside, nearly stolen by Arnold. Jurgensen gets it back. Now here's Hawthorne. He'll penetrate, pulls up, comes back outside. They'll reload. Jimmy Hawthorne to Gerald Peacock. 35-33, South Carolina had a six-point lead. Idaho has cut it down to two. Idaho, as we said, 13-2 and two for the year. South Carolina 10-4. and four. They were 14-15 and 15 last year, but lost only one man. The coaching staff did a good job. They've done some things against Idaho's zone to make two people play the ball and free someone. Jurgensen, Hawthorne, looks for Foster. 
very patient South Carolina offense, Bill. Well, Peacock and Hawthorne have run the offense, they've gotten the ball, distributed it well, and they, by and large, have taken good shots. Hawthorne? Are they, uh, is Idaho collapsing as much as you thought around Foster? Well, they came out with Hawthorne making the jump shot and it opened it up a little bit, but now they're throwing some different sets at them, and it's tough for them to really key on Foster. Now there's Hawthorne, travel. Good penetration, unfortunately for South Carolina, a walk call. Now Mike Britton, the seven-foot uh, sophomore, will come back in the lineup for Brad Jurgensen. Mike Britton out of Clearwater, Florida. He and Jimmy Foster, you see, and Steve Steinwittle. Bill Foster, by the way, will not be at the game. He is not at the game. The doctors will not allow him to uh, either even listen to the ball games because of the stress involved. But his progress is good. Had heart surgery five weeks ago, and Steinwittle is 6-2 and two as his acting coach. Foster with a rebound. Quick outlet pass to Peacock. Watch it from ground level now. Here's Peacock. Far side. Underneath, Holmes. And that'll be Idaho ball. Inopportune pass by Kenny Holmes. Of course, that shot's the one that we were seeing all ball game. We've got 15 minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the ball game. What had been a six-point South Carolina lead has been shaved to two. It's 35-33. Tomorrow, CBS Sports brings you more coverage of NCAA basketball featuring sixth-rated Memphis State, fifth-ranked in the CBS Sports Coaches Poll, pitted against North Carolina State starting at one. Following NCAA basketball, the final round of the Grand Prix Masters Tennis Tournament from Madison Square Garden. I know Rick Sharp and Bob Fishman and Steve Shearer are sitting up there in Raleigh getting ready for that telecast tomorrow right now. Looking, looking forward to an exciting ball game as we have here. In the meantime, we've got Peter Butcher and Gene Harper, Mitch Goldstein, Frank Chikanian Jr. down in the truck just working hard as can be here. Alley oop. That Cal ties it up. Kellerman again with the assist. Good pass to Kelvin Smith. Kelvin Smith with eight points. We're tied at 35. 15, 18 to go in the game. And it has been a good one. The longer South Carolina lets Idaho stay close, Idaho's going to become on track and get into the game a little bit. They had some opportunities to put them away a little bit, get a substantial lead, get some turnovers or quick shots. They've gotten Idaho right back in the ballgame. Uh, nearly taken away by Phil Hobson. Out to the point to Jimmy Hawthorne. Starts to drive, settles back, gives it off to Gerald Peacock. Well, we mentioned South Carolina was 14 and 15 a year ago. Idaho was 27 and 3 and defeated Iowa in the first round of the NCAA tournament before losing to Oregon State at Provo. Under Don Munson, they have been in the tournament the last two years. They call it the golden age of Idaho basketball. And very few people say Idaho anymore. Very patient South Carolina offense. They're trying to find a good shot and solve the mysteries of this matchup zone. It's perplexing and it causes you to try a little bit, be a little more patient. Jimmy Hawthorne, left side to Peacock. They can't find anything yet. Well, of course, Foster and Jurgensen are out. They're two of the better inside people, too. Jimmy Foster getting a rest right now, and they draw the foul. Pete Priggy, I believe it is, number 24. There's Jimmy Foster coming back in. They call this one on Stan Arnold. Could have given it to a few people. <laughs> so Jimmy Foster returns. He got a breather. There's Stan Arnold with the foul. That is his third. So he is the second Idaho player in foul trouble. Here's Foster. Oh, my goodness. Kelvin Smith all over him. Kelvin Small. Was That's that right. right. They had early in the year. He's 6'6", and in the Far West Classic, one of the local papers in Portland, referred to him as the starting center of the Idaho Vandals, Kelvin Small. That out-of-bounds play against Idaho State, if they were mentally sharp, would not have occurred. Nobody blocked Foster's route to the goal. Stepped in, made it a tough pass on him. He just barreled down the lane, got the entry pass, laid the ball up. Foster, three of six today, hitting 50% from the line. This is the first. Understand we're having some minor technical problems, and our technicians are working on those right now. Foster gets one out of two, and he's four out of eight from the line. 36-35 South Carolina lead, and Foster with 18 points. Far and away the leading uh, scorer in the game. Underneath it goes. Bill Hobson. And he's fouled by Kenny Holmes, I believe. Nope, they're going to call it on uh, Garmin. 
the elbow to pass. Number 24 gets the foul. That is his second of the game. What always amazed me as a coach, every time you were in trouble, you asked the players to get it inside, and they were aware you weren't playing well. Then as the game progressed, they'd get away from jamming it down the lane with an easy percentage shot. Kelvin Smith goes back out to Brian Kellerman. Kellerman with three fouls and Arnold with three fouls. So the backcourt of Idaho in foul trouble. 13-35 to go, 36-35 to score. Smith taken away by Peacock, and it's over to Hawthorne. Cross-court pass goes back underneath. Jimmy Foster, oh, boy. I don't know about this call. I think the crowd assisted the <laughs> official. They always say when you're not coaching, the official had a better angle. There's the steal from Peacock and then Hawthorne. Good pass here, Bill. Good look. Tried to lay it up for Foster, but I don't think Foster was expecting that. Didn't time it properly, really. And here we see the swipe by Darmody. And now we see a change. They have changed the call, and Munson is up. And that's got Steve Steinwittle up. He's upset. He just, Munson's not happy. Steiny just threw some paper into the crowd. A little distraught at the change. 36-35 South Carolina. Foul call before the attempted basket. On Hobson, on the pick. A moving pick. Some tough balls on both sides. And that is the third foul on Bill Hobson. So he becomes the third starter for Idaho with three personal fouls. 13.08 to go, first half. Turnovers now, Idaho 12, South Carolina 9. Here's Scott Sanderson back in the lineup with Peacock in the backcourt. They're giving Jimmy Hawthorne a rest. Whatever you set up, this defense accommodates you. They'll come out and play you in that. South Carolina was in a 1-4 set. They came and played 1-4. Down the baseline. Oh, that's his favorite shot. Oh, he can hit that till the cows come home. Nine points for Kenny Holmes, 38-35. Back to a three-point South Carolina lead. That was set up by Sanderson's penetration. Good dump off. Gellerman hooks underneath. Nobody there. Goes back to Stan Arnold. Arnold left side to Kelvin Smith. He'll pump once. Put it up. No good. Too strong. Darmody with a rebound. Carolina with a chance to go up by five at the 12-and-a-half minute mark. Sanderson, 0 for 7 the other night shooting, so he's going to be kind of quiet from the field. Here's Holmes, back to Sanderson. Sanderson actually does a better job than Peacock does of getting the ball inside to Foster. Peacock's a better offensive player, but gives something up in trying to look for himself more than he can look for others. Baseline again, Holmes has it rejected. Puts it in. Holmes has been very aggressive. Pump fake, got the shot blocked, but back up for the score. 11 points, Don Munson wants to call a timeout. It's a tired Idaho bunch, and they trail by five. We've got 11 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the ball game. South Carolina up by 40 to 35. We've had a great afternoon of sports coverage here on CBS, and interesting programming tonight. Bring them back alive, an uncommon valor tonight on CBS. They are erupting here at Carolina Coliseum. Well, I'm sure Don Munson is looking for his home run hitter. Not right now. He's not going to find him down there. But Brian Kellerman has not had a goal. Has to get back in the ball game for Idaho. Five points, South Carolina lead. Kellerman too short. Here's Pete Priggy. Loses it. Priggy with the foul on the follow-up. So number 24, Pete Priggy, draws a, a hand clap from Steve Steinwell. Take a look at Ray Jones next to him and Kurt Kanaski, his assistants. When you run your plays well, as Idaho did, and do not make the little goal that Kellerman missed, the travel does affect you. They are in serious foul trouble now. Priggy with four, Arnold with three, Kellerman with three, and Hobson with three. There's the bounce pass, an air steal by Arnold, battle for it. And it's taken right away by Scott Sanderson. Kellerman wants a foul called on that play, but didn't get it. 11.05 to go in the ball game, 40 to 35. South Carolina, Kenny Holmes has hit that shot here. He does not look like a basketball player, but he can nail that jump shot. 
13 points for Kenny Holmes. Basket good at the other end. Mike Kellerman. Brian Kellerman gets his first uh, basket of the half. Quick transition basket. 42-37. South Carolina has had a six-point lead. Idaho's largest lead has been one, I believe, throughout the game. Alley-oop, they try it, and a foul called on Elvin Smith. His third. So four starters have three fouls. One has four for Idaho. On this play, really, Scott Sanderson was in an opportune pass. Wasn't necessary with the lead they have. But fortunate enough for, for South Carolina, Kelvin Smith was detected for the foul. That's the fifth team foul for South Carolina. So, I mean, for Idaho, so South Carolina will not shoot. They'll bring it in. Gerald Peacock, 42-37, 10 and a half remaining in the game. Right side it goes. Back top of the key to Sanderson. Peacock. South Carolina now has Peacock, Scott Sanderson, Kenny Holmes, Kevin Dormady, and Jimmy Foster in the lineup. Three-second call down low on Kenny Holmes. Lane violation on South Carolina. Kenny was just taking a little rest there after <laughs> a series of jump shots. <laughs> just pitched his tent and decided to stick around for a while. Fans are up. Munson, did you see that uh, call by Dave Collier, the assistant coach, next to Don Munson? Here's a shot. I don't know if they're going to score the goal. Watch it now, underneath. No basket. Munson not happy, smiling over here. Talking. Offensive pick. They flash their offensive plays in from the bench, Idaho does. Good when the card. crowd is involved in the game, Don Munson uses the card. Otherwise, it's a verbal command. Right side, underneath the baseline to Holmes. Back to Sanderson, back to Holmes. I never used cards. I didn't have that many plays. They have, they have 60, I think. Here's the fast break. Arnold over Peacock, too strong. Kelvin Smith, this is the rebound. Taken up and good. Freeman Watkins, number 42, it'll be a chance for a three-point play. Well, the test of champions is when you're being pushed, challenged, good pass by Kellerman, setting up the pass to Arnold, good strong follow-up by Kellerman, Smith. Watkins coming over to the weak side for the rebound. It limped on through, and he can cut the lead to two now. He sneaks a look every once in a while. We see the cards on his right, but he sneaks a look at the scoreboard, and if they're ahead, he starts watching the ball game. Three-point play by Freeman Watkins. And now the full-court press employed by Idaho. 42-40 with 9.24 to go. And they got that trap working in the backcourt. They're going to have to hurry to get it across the timeline. Sanderson beats it. Now, three on two. Jurgensen puts it up short. Rebound, Freeman Watkins. Here's Kellerman. He'll score. We're tied at 42. It's worth a timeout at this point. Except Foster's loose on the other end. That's the way to negate a timeout. I believe Steiny was up looking for it. Idaho caught asleep a little. 44-42, 8.50 to go. Burn Lundquist, Bill Raffery here at Carolina Coliseum in Columbia, South Carolina. Idaho with a long trek from Moscow, Idaho. First time they have ever played South Carolina. Kellerman. He's being shielded out. Find Smith underneath. Tied again. 44-44. Ten points for Kelvin Smith and Munson's back up. <laughs> I can watch him all day long. He gets involved in the basketball game. Will not fall for Jimmy Foster. Kelvin Smith, I think this is going to be on. Timeout by Munson. In serious foul difficulty. Don Munson wants to talk it over. He's got some kids with foul problems. CBS's coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. North Carolina State tomorrow. Keith Lee, one of the outstanding players in the country, will lead the Memphis State team. They've lost only once this year, and they'll be on the road tomorrow in Raleigh, North Carolina against North Carolina State. 
It's NCAA basketball live on your NCAA Championship Network, CBS, 1 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow, Memphis State and North Carolina State. And that'll be followed by the Grand Prix Masters. All of that coming up tomorrow on CBS Sports. Take a look at the shot chart here in the second half. And Bill Raftery, look at the difference down here to the right side. This is Idaho in the second half. All well, the in the first half, South Carolina had nine goals under the glass. And here we see six already by Idaho. And I believe it's Kellerman's aggressive penetration, good quick layups, and the follow-ups that in have helped them. In contrast, South Carolina has one layup so far here in the second half. And they were getting the ball in close early as we see the missed foul here by Jimmy Foster. And Foster misses. He's got 20 points so far. He is four of nine from the line, make it five of 10. Well, he hits 50 percent. He's right on his percentage. Foul trouble. Triggy four. Hobson four. Smith four. Kellerman three. I don't know if Don Munson brought enough players along from Moscow. Hobson. Stan Arnold. Back to Freeman Watkins, who had the big three-point play a moment ago. Here's Kelvin Smith. Too strong. Rebound. And a back. Oh, the foul is on Brad Jurgensen. Jurgensen pushing off and... I think Coach Munson has worked the officials well. Nothing aggressive, nice, subtle voice. <laughs> Coercy. Is, you got to make your points early, is that what you're saying? Well, I and think consistently. He's, he's very quiet, and I think officials appreciate that. Four fouls on Jurgensen. He becomes the first South Carolina player with four. 7.57 to go. Idaho looking for the go-ahead bucket. Left side, Brian Kellerman. Baseline now. Hobson can't get the shot, goes to Kellerman, who does. What a quick release. Brian Kellerman's feet are set early in the morning for his jump shot. 16 points for the senior guard. Most valuable player as a sophomore in the Big Sky Conference and all MV in the all Big Sky last year. He's a four-year starter. Here's Jimmy Hawthorne and Gerald Peacock, 46-45. South Carolina trails by one with seven and a half remaining in the game. Peacock. Back to Jimmy Hawthorne. Hawthorne a sophomore. Peacock the only senior starter. They looked underneath for Jurgensen. Peacock will come left side to Kenny Holm. Back it goes to Hawthorne. Will not take the shot. Does it try your patience going against the zone like this? Well, it tried mine as a player. I learned how to shoot a two-hand set just to get a shot off. But these players have handled it very well, getting the ball in tight, kept moving in the lane, and Jimmy Foster able to draw the two-shot foul. Foster, however, is down, and the foul is going to be on Phil Hobson, and that may be it for him. That's five fouls for Phil Hobson. He leaves the game with nine points, and that's it. He becomes the first Idaho Vandal to foul out. We really didn't see the Phil Hobson that we looked at in tapes and films. Good inside player, can score inside now. Jimmy Foster's been very active in the three-second lane. Kenny Holmes spotting him free. Little pump release and almost getting the ball to fall through. Hobson knowing it was him. Hobson gets his fifth foul on Jimmy Foster. Foster is up and he's fine. Timeout has been called. We've got 6.53 remaining in the ball game. And South Carolina still trails by one. Tomorrow on CBS Sports, the final round of the tournament that has seen the best in the world battle it out. The Grand Prix Masters Tennis Tournament tomorrow on CBS Sports. Well, they've had some great tennis played all week in that tournament. You'll see the final tomorrow. We've got a great basketball game going here with Idaho leading by one, 46-45. Their only losses this year came in the second game of the year at Fresno State and in overtime last week. In a Big Sky Conference game in Nevada, Reno, they were down, they were up 21 points in the first half in that one. Well, Coach Munson said it was early 21, but I believe not seeing the game, the running and the pressing of Reno was very effective. But the outstanding thing about Idaho is winning the Far West Classic the last two years. It's such a difficult field each year. The only other team to win consecutively was Oregon State, the host team. Jimmy Foster hits the first. He's got 22 points for the day. His high this season is 30. That is also a career high, and he's hit it twice. He misses the second, so he's right on target with 50% of his free throws. We are tied again. 46 all, 6.45 to go in the game. Kelvin Smith. 
Brian Kellerman, he's going to have to be the big man. He uses that glass so effectively. Uh, he, he could have played for John Wooden the way he uses the glass, but he gets his feet set and his hands to catch the ball and face the basket as quickly as I've seen a basketball player. 18 points now. The lineup, uh, 18 points for Kellerman. Here's Jimmy Hawthorne with an outside shot. Eight points for Jimmy Hawthorne, tied again at 48, 48, 6.15 to go. Here comes Idaho. This is Zane Frazier, number 30, a sophomore from Los Angeles, back to Kelvin Smith in the corner. Air ball, but it's going to be off South Carolina, and it'll go Idaho's way. Good call. Without Hobson, there's not as much an offensive threat out there. Kellerman will probably be looking to force the ball a little bit more. He's really got to take charge now, Kellerman does. Freeman Watkins will inbound it to Stan Arnold. Back it goes to Kellerman. Kellerman right side. 2-3 zone after the out-of-bounds. Back to Arnold. Kellerman with 18 today. Baseline shot. No good, but the rebound goes to Kelvin Smith. Loses the ball. Off his foot. It's been that kind of day for the Vandals. 5.44 to go in the ball game, and South Carolina with a chance to go on top. Idaho, 17 turnovers to 12 for South Carolina. In the corner. Now under to Jimmy Foster. Back it goes. Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Hits it. Showing more confidence in each sequence down floor. Jimmy Hawthorne almost charged. Help up. Hit the jump shot. South Carolina back on top. And that brings the crowd up. Kelvin Smith. Baseline. Off balance shot. Foul called underneath. And Freeman Watkins will go to the line. Kenny Holmes may have been detected underneath with a little body, and he has a little body to offer. No, he doesn't have a little body. <laughs> a little extra body. Yeah. There's Kenny Holmes, his third foul. Freeman Watkins is hitting 75% of his free throws. Ray Jones, the assistant coach, said Holmes has not missed a training meal this year. <laughs> He's been around for the women's team, too. <laughs> well, maybe. Rebound South Carolina, 50 to 49. Watkins hit only one out of two. We've got 5-0-4 remaining in the game. And Idaho still is not in a penalty situation. Hawthorne with 10 points. Baseline jumper, Holmes. This one doesn't go. Jerkinson rebound. Bites off some traffic. Kellerman shaking his head. South Carolina will try it again. Underneath the Jerkinson. Foul. Good offensive move by Brad Jerkinson. We don't have the number, but quite a number of foul shot differential here. Idaho unable to get into the one-on-one -on -one situation. And I believe it's the switching defenses and the long jump shots. They're not getting the ball inside as well as they did earlier. Foul was on Zane Frazier. That was his first, but Don Munson puts him on the bench and has pulled uh, Paul Pete Priggy back in. And Brad Jerkinson misses the first of his free throws. He's hitting 78% for the year. He's had only two points today, and he had two the other night against East Carolina. Misses them both. And Kelvin Smith with a rebound. Idaho, Brian Kellerman gets it to Stan Arnold. 50 to 49, South Carolina, 433 remaining in the game. Underneath, Kelvin Smith, foul call on Jimmy Foster. Reaching in, Jimmy Foster trying to do his job, getting in front of the postman. A wise Brian Kellerman passing the ball to the correct hand to avoid the slap away. That's the third foul on uh, Jimmy Foster. And sends Kelvin Smith to the line. He's a 73% free throw shooter. That ties it up again. 50, 50, 429 to go. Idaho, South Carolina meeting for the first time ever. Misses the second. We're still tied at 50. So neither team has been uh, resplendent in their efforts at the free throw line. A little extra shooting tomorrow. Left corner, Kenny Holmes. Holmes in double figures. Peacock looks for Foster. Foster high point man of the game with 22. Hawthorne finds Foster. There it is, but he's short. And here comes Idaho. They'll hold it up. They will not run it. 
Kellerman, left side, Kelvin Smith. Turn around, jumper short. Bad shot. Well, actually, Brian Kellerman made a mistake in giving the ball up that early. He should have brought the ball down and got into their offense, knowing that Smith may have taken that shot. 3.50 to go in the game. We're tied at 50. 50, 50. Underneath, good pass by Hawthorne. What a dandy pass that was by Jimmy Hawthorne. Threading the needle into the correct hand. Beautiful look by Jim Hawthorne. Jurgensen with the basket. He's got four. 52-50 South Carolina leads. Kellerman, not enough. Foster with a rebound. Idaho. Traveled here from Moscow, Idaho. Right now, there might be a chance of trying a little more, being more patient, making Idaho work in a timeout now as Steiny's getting his troops organized. Biggest game in Stan Stein Weddle's career. He's the acting coach for South Carolina. Three minutes and 14 seconds remaining from Carolina Coliseum, and South Carolina leads by two. Three minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the game. South Carolina with a lead of two points and a lot of pressure on Brian Kellerman. Well, he's Bill. your top player and he's, been, he's created things for his career at Idaho. Forced a few things recently, but he has to create something for them to win the ball game. So it's a fine line between forcing and trying to win for your club. Might South Carolina go to the delay game now with three minutes remaining? Well, I think they'll look for a good shot. Ah, there's a steal by Kelvin Smith. It goes to Freeman Watkins, and here comes Idaho with a chance to tie. They put Joe Sweeney in at point guard now. Paul Priggy, number 24. This is Kelvin Smith, top of the key, number 40. He's got Foster away from the backboard. Gets the screen, gives it to Kellerman. Here's Priggy. He doesn't want the shot on the corner. This is and a five-man passing game that they run. I, I think Don Munson ran it because he didn't like the shots they were getting. Kellerman, turn around. Hits the backboard. And here comes South Carolina. Peacock, a one-on-three. He'll pull it up and come back outside. 2-18 remaining in the game. Two points, South Carolina lead. Here comes the delay game. Well, they run a 2-1-2 delay, copying the foul line man out. You see Foster out already. And the timeout being called by Peacock. And now I think Don Munson will either run his half-court trap or come out and play man to man. We've got two minutes and six seconds remaining. It's been tight all the way, and it still is. 52-50, South Carolina has the lead with 2.06 to go. Back at Carolina Coliseum in Columbia, South Carolina, Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery. South Carolina with a 2-0 lead. 2.05 to go in the delay game in effect for South Carolina. Three guards on the floor for South Carolina, and the foul's going to be on Arnold grabbing Brad Jurgensen, but that foul line has been open in the half-court trap, but Steiny wisely going with three guards to handle the ball, and now the substitution Foster for Sanders. I'll tell you, South Carolina is only, Bill, eight out of 18 at the line. Idaho may want to send them there. Well, it's a kind of thing. You live and die on the foul line and turnovers, and they could have put the ball game away. We see the switch now for defense with Foster back in the ball game. Missed again, eight out of 19. And here comes Idaho with a chance to tie. If South Carolina loses this, they're gonna blame it on their free throw shooting. They are eight out of 19. Freeman Watkins, the junior. Looks for Kelvin Smith, back to Arnold. And they've got two point guards in there. Joe Sweeney, here's Kellerman. Turn around, jumper, got it, and he was fouled. Now, Brian Kellerman's been working on John Titus saying, I've been hit on my jump shot all night. During the timeout, the commercial break, he was talking, and there, I don't believe he was touched at all on that jump shot. <laughs> the power of persuasion. Brian Kellerman. One of four children of Reverend and Mrs. Mervyn Kellerman of Mountain Home, Idaho. It's good. He's the baby of the bunch and the best athlete. And his three-point play has put Idaho back on top, 53-52. Jimmy Hawthorne, there's Holmes on the baseline. Foster, he can counter. Is there a charge? Yes, a charge. And not so many people in the building agree with it. And Idaho so, is in the bonus. Ryan Weddle is beyond himself. I don't know, Bill. What do you think? Uh, I thought he had the angle to the goal, and we see now the timeout. Don Munson going to change his strategy, but a tough call, particularly in your home arena. 
They gave Foster the charge, and timeout has been called. Steve Steinwittle, the acting coach at South Carolina. 53-52, 121 remaining in the game, and Idaho has the lead. Steve Steinwittle with last second instructions for his team. They trail by one, 53-52, and Idaho will end down the ball. Well, Idaho is an unusual small game. They put a stack on the 28-foot line on either side of the floor, and they look for back cuts out of it. I'm sure that's what the coach Steinwittle is preparing for. Deny the ball aggressively, double up when you can. They also have good man-to-man -man pressure, and they have a half-court trap. So we could see some exciting things down this last minute and 20. And in meditation, Coach Brunson saying, get me back to Moscow. If he's been praying as much as I think the country is in good hands, it may have been saved. Idaho gets it for him. Jimmy Hawthorne almost coming up with a steal. 53-52, 1.19 to go in the game. And that inbound play is not all that easy, is it, Bill? Tough to get the ball in. Harassing the inbounder as well as denying the ball. Kellerman, Joe Sweeney, Arnold. Clock running with 109 to go, and they'll spread it out and stack it now. Is that the way? Crowd urging South Carolina on. That's off the foot, and it's saved by Idaho. They are trying to go 14 and 2. Here's Kelvin Smith hit, and he'll shoot two. Deliberate foul. Or he was in the act of shooting. Kenny Holmes had no recourse but to give the two-shot foul. And this is what happens when you gamble a little bit defensively. You see the double up. Stan Arnold coming up with the loose ball. Hitting the point. Kelvin Smith being pushed before he can release the basketball. He will shoot two, however. Now, in contrast to uh, South Carolina's problems at the free throw line, Idaho simply hasn't been there that much. And Jimmy Foster comes back in. Idaho is six out of 10. Contrast that with the eight of 19 for South Carolina. And as a coach, you're saying, gee, we're playing as aggressively as they are. We should be on the foul line. I'm sure Don Munson has spoken to the officials about that. 56 seconds remaining in the game. There's the Idaho huddle. Their coach, Don Munson, they've got the lead of one. We'll be right back. Idaho has a one-point lead, and they've got Kelvin Smith at the line. The other four, Idaho men on the quarter down at the other end of the defensive end. So Kelvin Smith is all by himself. I know crowds enjoy that, but I really believe that good players concentrate on the rim and miss on their own. Got one out of two. So they are 7 of 11 from the field, and they have a two-point lead. 54 seconds to go, and the clock winding down. Jimmy Hawthorne, Gerald Peacock. Now, they can't be too patient. Here's Jurgensen, turnaround jumper. Good. Tied it up. Good inside look. Six points for Jurgensen, 40 seconds to go. There's Steve Steinwettel. Idaho to inbound. We've got 40 seconds remaining in the game. Tied at 54. Both clubs with two timeouts each remaining. Small game by Idaho. Peacock taking away Joe Sweeney's right. Now back to Arnold. He fakes. They'll spread it out. Are they going to go for one shot? I believe they are. They've got to work at the killer man, right? They're going to hold it. Take the one. All right. They call timeout and Kellerman and Don Munson, who habitually will disagree with one another. Uh, had some disagreement over the, <laughs> the time of the timeout bet. Now let's uh, take a look at the bench with Don Munson. Timeouts remaining. Idaho has one. South Carolina two. Uh, defensively now, if you're, if you're South Carolina, you want to play aggressive man to man, but don't give up the back cut. And I don't know whether I would double up now. Maybe we can hear something here. He's done well. It's off the noise. It's Kirk Kanaski to his right and Ray Jones just behind him. Who would you guess will take the final shot? If it's not number 12, you've got a scoop. Well, that shot he made on CBS. And there's Brian Kellerman, and uh, by all 
Logic, he should get the shot. He's got 21 points right now. He's talking over with Jerry Donahue. I think well, they'll try and get the ball in his hands so that he would be fouled, their best foul shooter, or also end up with the shot. The big thing is, if you're guarding him, try not to let him get the ball. If he gets it, make him give it up. 18 seconds to go, 54-54. Brigney will inbound. He's got the hurry, gets it in to Joe Sweeney, number 21. See the clock in the lower right-hand corner, no foul call there. It's worked down to 10, and timeout has been called again. They call time with nine seconds remaining. Now, this is fun. Well, Tom Lutzen said it was worth the trip now. This is what I got on that bus for. Let's see if we can imagine what Munson is telling them. Now, Kellerman was not a part of that play then. Well, I think they're just trying to run the clock a little bit, maybe see what type of defense. Here we see the timeouts remaining, but I got to keep that Munson looked over his shoulder as though there was something that was happening in the lineup. We got to get the ball in first, and then go from there. Okay, want to get, want the ball to go to Brian if we can. Okay, we need a shot. So, don't screen or anything. We can't, we can't afford. We can't afford a chance on a bad screen. Ball. If we have to, we'll go into overtime. All right. Brian, you start on the free throw line. If you can't, you know, you can't wait too long for him to get you the ball. That's good call, guys. Don't foul. Well, that's all right. Go for it. Don't, don't foul on the rebound. They get the ball on the rebound. And there's Steinbrenner. Well, I, I think anybody that's playing Kellerman, obviously, try not to let him get the basketball. And the big people have to be careful. They do run a step and go to their basket with a loop pass. So you've got to be concerned with giving up the easy goal. What you'd like to lose to, if you have to lose, is the long jump shot. Don't give the layup or the penetrating dribble. In the NCAA tournament last year, Kellerman hit an 18-foot jump shot with no time left in overtime to defeat Iowa. Stolen! Peacock! Four seconds. Holmes! will go to the General Scholarship Fund, and there's Steve Steinwittle. They're standing by, getting the adulation of this crowd here in South Carolina. Steve Steinwittle, 20.